Hey again, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, hopefully you guys are having a good week so far. You know, I'm having a great week. I'm kind of putting a theme on this week. This is the middle fork of the salmon week for me. Uh, you know, there's a special little present for you at the end of the, uh, on Friday, the end of this week. So, you know, please, uh, you know, be around for that. Um, you know, I'll kind of allude to that later in the week once, you know, things can kind of get rolling on here. Um, so to kick this off a little bit, you know, looking back at some old footage of mine, when we did the middle fork of the salmon this past year, um, you know, it was a great trip, an awesome trip. Uh, I mean, we're going to jump right into here, you know, talk about some of the rapids. But before we do that, please consider subscribing, you know, leave a question or a comment. I'd love to, you know, look back over there and start conversations with everybody. And also give the video a thumbs up. And if you like what you um, see here, you know, hit that notification bell too so you can keep these, um, you know, keep looking at this stuff and keep the ball rolling that way. So the first video that I've got for you today, we got three videos in this one today. The first one is uh, myself here, as you can tell, going to the kind of the first section of rapids on the metal fork of the salmon here. Um, the boat ramp was a ways back here. But this is kind of the Murphy's hole section or Murph's, Murph's hole section. I've actually started the video a little further up because you know there's some fun stuff through it as we go. So let's jump right into it. Oh, before we go too far as well, I do want to say the water level on this run was about 4.8 foot, which was an awesome water level to run it at. So that wasn't Murph's Hole, but you know, it's a fun little spot to get to. Little technical spot there, you know, those um, early season runs, you, you're always looking out for wood, you know, and especially on the first day of the river, you know, I really wasn't wanting to flip a boat over. So, you know, watching out for that wood and trying not to get too far into those holes or over, over pour over rocks, just trying to be as safe as I could out there. High side probably wasn't really necessary at that point, but you know, it's a good thing to, you know, uh, practice communication with your passenger there. You know, if you need them to do something or you need something kind of done there, you know, it's good to practice communication. Uh, my passenger right there is actually my mom. So a big shout out to my mom. Um, I don't know if she watches these videos or not, but a big shout out to my mom for riding the middle fork of the salmon with me. So right about there you can actually sort of start seeing Murph's hole a little bit. Um, I'm the third raft here, you know I was running the, the tail, tail spot because this is actually my fifth run on the middle fork of the salmon. The more, the other rather more experienced person is actually out in front. You can kind of see him just uh, beyond Murph's hole there. Um, so he was running point there and then our, the other raft is you know in the middle. Um, we had three rafts this trip and you know depending on the, the section of river and the day we could have out to about four kayakers as well. Um, there were a few spots where the the rapids and you know the, te the the weather just wasn't agreeable for some people so we opted out to you know just stay in the raft instead of kayaking which you know I think was a great choice because you know that day was pretty darn cold. So that is kind of surprising sometimes, especially when you're following someone, to watch their boat basically just disappear over the horizon kind of like that. You know, at that point in time, you're really only looking at two people. You have no idea where their boat is. You can definitely, you know, sort of make out where they are because you can kind of factor in where the two people were sitting in comparison to their boat. But coming into that spot where you see a boat drop right off the horizon like that, it's, a, it's definitely a little spooky and you really understand that, you know, you're coming up to something big and you kind of have to have your A-game on to get through this spot. You know, it wasn't that bad of a run. Um, 
definitely not that bad of a run at all. It was a uh, probably pretty, like I said, a decent level. It was about 4.8 foot. Um, kind of in uh, preparation to do this video, I actually um, researched uh, Murph's hole because I wanted to make sure I got the right one. And there is actually a video. The the video is about 6.1 foot, I believe. But the, there's these guys that are basically um, sitting with their boats in the eddy there on the river right, and they're watching another group come through, and I. It shows basically people flipping their boats there and cartwheeling out of their boat. Again, that was at a, at a higher water level, uh, above the six foot mark. So it just goes to show you, you know, these rapids can really change. You know, stay on your toes, especially on on the first day like this. But you know, I think um, I wouldn't have run this anything anywhere different. You know, I, I think my boat positioning was pretty good. Uh, you know, I I really would really love to run this river more just so I can you know get those rapids run a lot more and you know really get to know those rapids better um, like I said before this is was this was my fifth trip on the middle fork so you know I, I kind of knew what I was getting into there a little bit but you know even with five trips under my belt some of those rapids are still extremely surprising to me um, and Murph's Hole you know being day one and you know within a couple miles of the ramp there you know it's not something you really want to see looking on a map especially on day one but you know that's kind of how the middle fork is. That first 25 miles is really a baptism by fire if you're not ready for it, so. Yeah, that was a fun run. So the next rapid we're gonna look at is Velvet Falls. This is the first class four rapid you come to on the middle fork, um, at least by my memory anyway. I could be wrong, but you know, every single time I've looked at that map, Velvet has always popped up as a first class four rapid, um, which is, you know, it's, it's a fun one. It's got, you know, it's a pretty fun feature in there. Um, and you know what kind of gets me a lot, um, and you know, I'm not too, I'm okay with Velvet here, but you know, it's within six miles of the boat ramp. So especially when you're out there on a, uh, a new trip there, if you've never done the middle fork of the, middle fork of the salmon before, or if you've, you've done it barely, you know, Going six miles in and having your first class four rapid there, if you're not prepared for it, can be really surprising. And you know, that, that got me um, a few years ago, but you know, ever since then, been running this great. Again, I'm running the, the tail guy here, the sweet boat, whatever you want to call it. Making sure that, you know, if something happens downstream, I can be there because, you know, I had a bit more experience on the river. Uh, this boulder over here on the left side is, you know, it's mentioned in quite a few of the guidebooks as being able to be a, you know, a feature there you can recognize and pull a boat into the eddy behind there on the left and kind of skirt, <coughs> skirt Velvet a little bit. Um, Velvet Fall, <coughs> excuse me, Velvet Falls as a feature is actually a wave that spans the entire, uh, entire river right there. It's a big old drop and basically if you're not you don't, if you don't have the momentum, if you if you have your boat skewed a little bit, it could really mess you up. Uh, but you know there have been mentions that using this left side eddy, you can actually kind of skirt it around a little bit. Um, I've only ever done that once, and that was on my very first trip down the Middle Fork. I was actually with a commercial company, and that's how we were able to use that eddy to get around because these, those guys knew exactly where to put their boats at. You know. Great, I have you know, great respect for all the outfitters who run the Middle Fork. You know, it's a tough river, um, especially if you're out there for a week and you know, that's your life. Although I'm sure you probably get used to it after a while. So like I said before, I've actually never really used that rock. Um, I, well, I've done it once, I'll, I'll take that back. I've used the Eddie back there once. But all the other times besides that, I've basically, what I've called, basically running the gut of the rapid. Which, like you saw there, it's like full power into it. And then one big push up and over that wave and keep going from there. Um, it's definitely, you know, I know a technique I use still to this day on quite a few things. Where, you know, using the power and momentum of your boat to get up and over things is a great thing to have. Um, I actually have a really cool story about Velvet. This happened uh, my second time running Middle Fork of the Salmon, and it was actually my first private trip down the Middle Fork. Um, my dad, who is actually a little further ahead of us here, there he is. You can sort of see him downstream. He's the 
uh, he's the front man there. He actually got his raft stuck in the velvet. Um, you know, his, like I said, first private trip, we were cruising along here. He was the front man and he basically disappeared right over the horizon from what I saw. Um, and then, you know, at that moment I knew I was like, oh crap, red velvet. And you know, he disappeared and then I saw the blue of his boat starting to poke back upstream. And I thought immediately that he's stuck in the hydraulic, he's surfing that thing. And so the only response I had in my head at the time was to go full power into it and actually ram him out of the rapid, which, you know, worked out beautifully. I knocked him out of the way and then my boat actually did a 180 and came out backwards, which, you know, I was extremely thankful for. So there's a, there's a little story about uh, Velvet, Velvet Falls for you. All right, the last um, rapid and video I have for you in this video anyway is of Pistol Creek. Um, all these rapids were within the first couple of days. It's kind of how I'm going to break it up through here. Uh, this will be kind of the first part of it, and then you'll put I'll put the second part out in the next video. Uh, but Pistol for me has always been that one rapid that I've been you know queasy about going down on the on the Middle Fork. Um, for whatever reason, it's been that one rapid that you know my gut's always been in a knot of four. Um, uh, it's it's an odd thing to say, but I've actually never scouted pistol. Um, you know, a lot of people could take that one way or the other. You know, you know, it's like, are you crazy for not scouting it? Like, I might be a little bit crazy for not scouting it. Uh, I never have. Um, you know, I when I first ran it, I probably should have spoken up and say, hey, you know, let's pull over and scout it. But you know, it never happened. Um, and. You know, from then on out, you know, it's been the kind of the queasy rapid for me. Um, if you're not familiar with pistol as well, it's basically this big S turn as you go through it. So you're basically, as you can tell, the river is coming into the right side here. It's going to change direction back to the left and then kind of back out to the right again. Um, which isn't that bad, uh, but the thing about pistol is it gets pretty narrow in there. And as you can kind of tell right in front of my dad's spot there, there is kind of a little rock peninsula down there a little bit. And you can definitely see it more in lower water. And in higher water, you basically float straight over the thing. I've actually run this thing, um, or run the middle fork at seven foot. And you know, there's very, uh, quite a few rapids and you know, it's just how rapids are formed. But you know, they, the higher water, you know, presents more passage for, you know, boats down the river, you know, it's, it gives you more spots to put your boat out, of course. And some hydraulics and some elements of the rapids are, you know, just gone at higher water, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, besides the 4.8 foot mark, I've run in the middle fork usually at three and a half foot, and so that's just a fun ride. But anyway, you know, I, I would have loved to stop and scout at this time. You know, a member of our group did, you know, kind of put her hand up there and she said she really wanted to scout the rapid, you know, and I was all for it. Uh, the reason I didn't is because the, the rapid, it's just across from the Scout, Scoutish River right and a little little upstream from it. I believe it's called Lake Creek or Lake Fork Rapid. But I actually witnessed my dad cartwheel out of his boat on that rapid. Um, I don't know how exactly he did it, but you know, it was rather spectacular to see somebody full cartwheel out of his boat, hanging onto an oar and topsy-turvy into the water. Um, and this, this day was kind of crappy and cold, so you know, I was trying to push ahead downstream, trying to catch up to my dad and make sure he was doing all right. Which, you know, led him into uh, an interesting predicament, and you, you'll spot that here in the video. So this right here, you can kind of tell if all this other stuff goes away. That's kind of that rock outcropping, rock peninsula I was talking about. Um, and you saw me kind of pulling off of that. And as you do that, you kind of pull, pull back to the left side and kind of move up against the left side cliff there a little bit. Um, and, I, and when I was doing it, I was moving away from that and also trying to move away from my dad who's currently stuck in hydraulic again. So that was 
that was my run on Pistol Creek, and I gotta say that was probably one of the cleanest runs I've had on Pistol Creek. You know, I've for some odd reason I just have this thing of popping out a pistol backwards, I suppose. But you know, this was the only time I have never bounced off the left side wall and come basically spinning out of the rapid. I would kept my boat under control on this one. You know, and that's big, a very big accomplishment for me. You know, I'm, I'm really happy to see that, you know, and feel it when I was there, so that was incredible. Um, I'm gonna rewind here a little bit. You can kind of see how, what pistol looks like from the bottom. So there it is, you know, you come in kind of to the right there and you kind of have to work your way back to the left and then kind of work away around this, the big rock peninsula, kind of where my dad's sitting at the moment and just follow the current out. Uh, and it's a lot more pronounced at lower water. Um, I have heard, you know, Middle Fork guys actually describe this rapid and he gives some awesome beta about it or information about it. And they actually, you know, almost suggested sticking a little further on the left side as you're coming in. Uh, we can re rewind this a little bit and you can tell I was kind of far on the right side. Um, I, from what I've heard, you can almost stick your bow a little further to the left there as you come around the corner and you don't have to fight against the um, fight against the water as much or the current as much kind of like what I was doing in there pulling that boat back and then flipping over and pulling back uh, back away from there so I probably did this really wide loop around that and come, came back out um, sticking to the left side you know it's not as far as a loop you got to make you know it'd be a, probably a, a cleaner cleaner run but you know, a lot of this stuff is just rinse and repeat. You just gotta do it to, you know, get good at doing stuff and you know, listen to other people about the river beta. Um, and if you're thinking about doing a, a river, you know, definitely try and track down some, you know, information or, you know, recommendations and talks from the, the guides who run that river. Um, there was an awesome podcast uh, that was out there. They talk about running the Middle Fork at low water and I'll link that to into the description here and I will also link the uh, Murph's Hole video in the description as well so you can go take a look at that. But other than that guys, you know, I kind of hope you guys have a great day. This is kind of a, a little bit of a, re a review, reaction, and breakdown of my last uh, Metal Fork run. Again, if you like it, please give the video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. I'd love to see 75 subscribers by the end of December, so that's a couple months out now. Um, please, you know, share the video with your friends, share the channel with your friends, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.